Now the sun provides us with solar energy and green plants absorb this solar energy. But solar energy is a huge amount of energy. Is that all used by green plants? No. You see the green plants are able to use just about 1% of energy. So your first point can be that 1% of solar energy is used by plants. Only 1%. Okay. Now once it has reached the green plants, it makes food and it becomes a part of the plant. But what happens to plants? They are eaten by the animals. But as plants also, they need lot of energy. Some of it is used for say digestion and other activities. Some is used for reproduction and growth. And lost of it, lot of it is wasted. How? It is released to the environment. Almost 90 percent released or used. So, what happens to 10 percent? That changes into the organic mass and only that much is available to the next trophic level. So, that means at producer level it got 1 percent of solar energy and out of that 1 percent about 10 percent was what was available to the consumer level. So, here we can say 10 percent changes to organic mass and is available to next level. Let us take a specific example. Say sun has 100,000 kilojoules, but then only one person can be absorbed. So, what will the plants get? Plants will get about say 1000 kilojoules. The animals or the consumers will get the primary consumer will get 100 kilojoules and the secondary consumer will get 10 kilojoules. Now, this is the case if there are only 3 trophic levels as in the case of first example. Now, imagine in this what will happen in the second case where we reach up to fifth trophic level, nothing will be left. Of course, sun does not have only 100,000 kilojoules, it has more, but then the point to be made is that as it moves up, the energy available keeps become reducing and after fourth or at best fifth trophic level, it is almost negligible. So, on this basis, there was a law concluded which is called 10 percent law. According to this law, only 10 percent of energy is available available at next trophic level. Next point is that because energy keeps on reducing, there can be only 4 to 5 trophic levels only 4 to 5 trophic levels in a food chain. Now, the question arises what is the direction of flow of energy? The direction is from sun to plants to primary consumers to secondary consumers, but can it revert? Can it go from con secondary consumer to primary or to plants and then back to sun? No, it cannot happen like that. So, we can say that it is unidirectional. Flow of energy is unidirectional. 
Another interesting thing is as the level of energy keeps on reducing, obviously the number of organisms that a level can sport will also keep on reducing, which means maximum number of organisms will be at producer level, because at that time there is maximum energy. So, producers. Then at the primary level, there will be comparatively less. Refer to that example, the, num the energy is getting reduced by 90 percent. Next is secondary consumers, then maybe tertiary and that is how it goes on. I told you that in the second example there were 5 levels. So, not only energy is reduced, the biomass also keeps on getting reduced. What is biomass? The total mass of the living beings in a particular trophic level. This is called an inverted pyramid. So, the next point can be that in a food chain we have an inverted pyramid, which means that the number of organisms at every level will keep on reducing. Now, we have taken a very classic example of food chain, so simple, straight, linear, but imagine in a forest will there will be only one food chain? No, a particular type of animal or a plant will be eaten by many. For example, grass is not only eaten by say deer, it is also eaten by rabbits, it is also eaten by grasshoppers and so on. And then similarly, the primary consumers or the herbivores, they will not be eaten only by one type of carnivore. If lion is there, what about the tigers or the leopards or other smaller carnivores? So, which means there is not one food chain, there are many food chains existing together and these food chains form a kind of network and that network is called food web. Food web. So, these are the points about the food chain and how intricate and yet complete it is in itself.